Hello, welcome back to the channel and to Extra Content Tuesday. This one is about range, again. Uh, it's the single most defining feature of an electric vehicle. How far does it go is the first question anybody asks. But for me, now, technology has got to the point where there's something which I would put as a higher desirability option than range alone. Something that's better, or at least makes it more flexible to have other than just a decent battery size. Now don't get me wrong, range is a big factor. I would prefer a car that does 200 miles than one that does 150. But there's a cost involved with range, a big cost. That's where most of the money is. If you buy a car with a bigger range, let's say a, a long range Tesla Model 3 instead of a, a standard range, you're looking at thousands of pounds extra. Although you do get more performance and four wheel drive, you get my point. The bigger the battery, the bigger the cost. Tech's got to the point now in EVs where there's something that I would put higher on my priority list than just range, and that is charging speed. There's a reason why if someone has a petrol car, let's say a big gas guzzler or a a sports car or something like that that does 250 miles or something in the real world to a tank. No one ever looks at a petrol car, even one that does such a short range, relatively speaking, and says it's unusable, it's not enough. Mr. Diesel Audi that does seven, 800 miles to a tank wouldn't think about it at all. The Mini I have on my drive, that probably does about 300, 300, 350 miles, how it's driven anyway, to a full tank. Now, that's more than enough, but ultimately, it's not a problem because you can refuel it fast. You know, in five or ten minutes, bang, you're back another two, three hundred miles, whatever the range is. With an EV, obviously, range is a problem. Charging speed is the key to flexibility, though. The Mini Electric, to use another Mini as an example, that does 115 miles, roughly, in the real world and even EV people are saying that's not enough, that car would be way more popular if it could charge very fast. If it could do it in 15 minutes, say. A lot more people would buy one because yes, the range is small, but you could put it back in quicker. The Subaru Solterra, which we reviewed, it's on the channel, I don't know, a month or two ago, that has an extremely poor charging curve. As soon as you get past 50, 40, 50%, it just drops down when you get above 60, 70. It's not even rapid charging at all. And that means that once you've gone beyond its relatively poor range of about 160, 70 miles, you then either have a long wait or you have to do charge hops of about 100, 110 miles each. Compare that to a Tesla, and they have the big advantage of charging fast, not just decent range and efficiency, but charging fast. I'm ignoring the charge network in this video and as an example, but with a charger that matches the car, it's not a problem. My Model 3, and it's only a standard range, it can't charge as fast as the long range, but it still charges at a rate where by the time I've come back from the services, got my Greggs, had, well, gone to the toilet and come back, it's usually waiting for me. And if it isn't, it's certainly done by the time I've finished my sausage roll. That's what makes it easy to live with among working chargers, I know, but you get my point. We're talking about range and flexibility and charging speed now is something I would prioritize as at least as important or even more so than just pure range because putting it back in is the single greatest advantage of a petrol diesel car. And if you have that for EVs, then well, the word range wouldn't even exist. That's why the better EVs, the ones that are well, not just as a car, but that they're, they're, they're a better package as an electric vehicle are, of course, Teslas and the South Korean brands, Kia, um, Hyundai, Genesis, with the exception of the e Nero and the Hyundai uh, Kona, they can all charge using the 800 volt architecture and ultimately can charge at Tesla speeds, I'll say, 260, 70 kilowatts, I think, on a matching charger. Porsche Taycan, that's the same, because it gives you that flexibility, it gives you the charging speed, which ultimately mean 
you can carry on your journey. It's as close as you can get to a petrol car at current tech levels. It'll get faster. Batteries will get uh, quicker at charging. Solid state batteries, for example, can charge immensely fast, theoretically. If we look at Stellantis Group stuff, so that's your Corsas, your, um, uh, what else is the the Citroëns and the Fiat's, the, the good, the good price, but 50 kilowatt hour battery, fairly standard charging speeds, that limits them a bit. If you could get a Corsa that only does its 160 miles, say, in the real world, and that charged twice as, if, twice as fast as it does today, then again, it makes it infinitely more flexible because you can go further. The charging stops becomes less of a headache. The Kia Nero EV, it's one of the best EVs on the road. That can't charge very fast. It's got the range of 250, 60 miles in the real world. It's immensely efficient, but that's the fly in the ointment. That's the thing that limits it. You might not have to charge very often given its range, but when you do, it's not bad. 70 kilowatts, I think it does, or thereabouts. But again, you're there for another 20, 30 minutes or more compared to the cars I've already mentioned. And that really does make a difference. Even though people only do these journeys twice a year or something like that, it sticks in your head. It, it makes you think, oh, well, let's take the other car or let's just not buy it in the first place. It's always about who wants to hang around for an hour. Well, if you've got the charging speed, you don't. Imagine a Honda E or, as I said, the Mini Electric that could recharge in 10 to 15 minutes and boom, you've got another 110 miles or whatever. That would, would be fine, just like it would be with a petrol car. So yeah, range is a big factor, but it's one that comes at a cost. They're a lot more expensive. Whereas charging speed, there's bound to be some cost in that, of course, but that's gonna be a standard. That's gonna be something which I'm hoping they will all do in the next five, 10 years. They will all be 800 volt charging and, and charge at a very fast rate and do it in a way that looks after the batteries. Again, technology will get us to that point. But for me, anything that charges below 100 kilowatts, new car now, it's just not good enough. It needs to be a minimum of 150 for me. And if we can get the 800 volt up to 300, then even better. That's probably more for the bigger battery versions though. So ultimately, I'll end it there. And tell me in the comments, which would you prefer? A car that does 150 miles that charges up again in let's say 15 minutes or a car that does 220 miles say but takes 45 minutes to charge up now of course there'll be some people saying well if i'm doing 200 miles i won't have to charge at all <laughs> so everybody's different but you get my point when you're doing i don't know uh, what we've done recently around scotland north coast 500 charging speed is more important than range because you're not hanging around if you're going to work it's not so much having to stop that's the problem you could get away with that because you need to go to the toilet or get a little bite to eat for your lunch hanging around waiting for it to charge that's what people don't want to do do you agree with me or would you always say range first charging speed second they kind of go hand in hand i guess but ultimately i would rather charge quickly than have that big range as I've said probably 5,000 times already. Look, it, it's, it's Friday, I've had a long week and I'm very tired, so I'm just kind of waffling. That's what Extra Content Tuesday is about. It's about me, it's my therapy sessions. I don't need a therapist, I've got YouTube. I've got you. I, I want more small hatchbacks that can charge very fast rather than big SUVs that have a bigger range. Okay, if you want to help the channel, please click the join button, which is next to subscribe button, because for 99p, you get these Friday videos on a Sunday instead, so you get them early, you get occasional members only videos, and you get a live stream at the end of every month, so you can ask me any question you like, and because there's not many members, you're pretty much guaranteed to get everything answered. Um, so yeah, if you want to support the channel, please do that, that'd be great. If not, just click the subscribe button, and then we're done. Right. Advert over. Thanks for watching. See you soon.